Well, hello, everybody. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stack, and I have some terrible news right now for you, unfortunately, and it's this guy right here. This gold bar is by far the best fake that I think I've ever seen, and this is just so ridiculous. We're going to dissect this thing. We're going to get to the bottom of this and try to figure out how we can tell a real bar from a fake bar. But this little thing right here is gonna is gonna scare you. It scares me a little bit. You know, out of all the fakes that I've seen so far um, that people have sent me, you know, you got a bunch of them right now. This is by far the worst. So let's get into it because this thing right here, this this is scary. bar was sent to me by Shore Stacker off of Instagram and he sent this to me because he wants to help people uh, just like I do so if you have any fakes out there please send them to me we'll, we'll try to educate people as much as we can or at least get them out of the hobby or the lifestyle of stacking precious metals so man you're a new collector you want to get some gold and you see this right here at your local shop or you see it online whatever the case may be and you're like oh cool gold let me grab that it would be so easy to just assume this is real. It comes in this really nice card. Let me zoom in on this Rapscallion right here. Look at this card. It comes in on a nice card, which it's supposed to have. Uh, a regular four nines fine gold Perth Mint bar will have this little assay card that it comes with. And it looks, it looks real, real good. But what we're going to do is just really just tear it apart and see at all levels what we can do to identify this as a fake. Now the Perth Mint is trying to stay above and beyond the counterfeiters and the problem is that they're changing like the design of their assay card and the way that they have their their information on this card. And so when you go to their website, it's kind of, you know, they're talking about the fake bullion that's out there and to be careful, but unfortunately they've changed so much that you can't keep track of what's current. And that kind of is a problem. So um, it's kind of difficult, like one of their you know, warning signs is if you don't see this black swan outline right here on the assay card, that that's a red flag. Well, as you can see, the counterfeiters have gone ahead and put that on there. <laughs> now, one thing that I noticed very quickly is on the reverse of this thing. And I got to zoom in to really, really see it. And it's hard to see is that the serial number, the bar number, although it's a bar number that, you know, it could very well exist. And we can look it up and see that there's one like that. If you look at it, it's, it's definitely not totally centered. And what do I mean by that? Well, the six, as you can see right here, is very close to the edge, whereas the B is a little bit further. So the serial number is slightly twisted. And although that right there is just so hard to see, that kind of is a red flag because it should be more even. Now, it's not always completely centered where the upper part of it is the same as the lower part as far as the gap, but that's one little telltale. The other, the other big one for me, and unfortunately, you're going to have to have another bar to compare this to if you're not knowing what you're looking at, is the kangaroos on the reverse. These little kangaroos are not right. I'm going to show you um, a picture of the a legit one right here on the right versus this fake one on the left. And you can see that the kangaroos are a little different. They're definitely some fatter font, and I'll say that nicely, just some chubbier font. It's not totally correct. So the counterfeiters haven't quite got the kangaroo correct yet, but they are getting close, it looks like. And that's something right there that if you didn't have a legit to compare it to, or if maybe your eyesight is not as good as it used to be, that's going to be very hard for you. And this is why I say that this is a just a scary fake. It's, uh, it's really disgusting. Now, there is something you can do if it's in one of these assay cards um, to identify whether or not it is real. And I'm going to take this out. This is usually something I take out to my latter part of the video, but this is something you got to do almost right off the bat. And let me show you what this is. So this is the Sigma Metalytics verifier. And what you need to do is actually get a bullion wand for this, one of the small, small bullion wands. We're going to power the thing up. And unfortunately, if you don't have one of these or your shop don't have one of these, 
they might not be able to identify this thing. Now there is an XRF machine. That's, you know, great too. If you can have a shop with an XRF machine, that would also serve the same purpose I'm kind of doing here. Uh, to a better degree, it will show you exactly what's in there, but it will definitely identify whether it's real or fake. Those are much more costly. Just a regular hobbyist like you and I, we're not gonna have one of those usually in our homes because they're just, you know, so expensive. But uh, sometimes our shops will have them. And the big online places, they all typically have those. So. I've set it to gold. It's ready to place a sample. What I got to do is just take this and press it up to the bar. And there should be some brackets here and a box that appears in the brackets if it's good. If it's outside of the brackets in any way, that means it's bad. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up to it, squeeze it up a little bit. And you can see the arrow pointing way off to the right, meaning it is not good. And we're going to cut this open later and see actually if we can identify anything inside that might be different than gold. But at least the Sigma Metalytics Precious Metal Verifier is saying this is not gold. And I actually have some real gold bars and assay cards here. And I will actually put them up to the Sigma Metalytics and show you what you should see. So here are a couple examples. This is actually the first bar that I ever bought that was gold, this little one grammar. And you might think, hey, one grammar, I, there's no way that thing can you know read that one gram bar. But I bet you I can do it. I'm going to go ahead and put the little wand right here up against it kind of press it up and you can see that that little box is within the brackets on this one gram bar. And this is only one gram, but it's able to identify that that actually is pure gold. So we'll do the other legit one right here to show you what you should see. And let's move it and get it actually centered on there. And you can see that it is actually pure gold. If you don't have it totally centered onto the piece, like I say, you're off to the plastic a little bit and you're a little bit on the gold like that, that won't read good because it's trying to basically read plastic. So you got to really get it center, centered onto the gold. You can see there. And once again, we're going to go back to the, the Perth Mint bar and put it on there and it's fake. We can put it anywhere uh, all over this thing and it's never going to read good because it's not good. It's not gold. Also, another thing in when you just look at it, and I want to do that before I even open this thing up, because this is what you would do at a shop. You would just be looking at it. You would see it in a, a case, probably a glass case. And uh, that's as far as you go. If it's online, I mean, you see it on a blurry picture and you hope it's legit, but that's the best you can do. The real Perth Mint bars have a different gold color to them. Now, this is kind of a matte finish here, and I don't know if you can really see that in this video the finish it has it's not like a, a shiny like almost like a proofy kind of finish you can see almost that proof more that mirror version of the finish kind of around the the font and the lettering right here on where it says the perth mint australia but the rest of the bar has a matte finish well a legit bar is very yellow and for anybody out there that takes like vitamins those people that maybe like work out or did work out back in the past and took a lot of multivitamins and you know that early morning pee you have i know this is gross but you know that extremely yellow urine that you have that's more of the color of the legit bars just that very very yellow this has just a very dull gold color to it and i want to show you again too some more troubling things and why it's just it's hard to to tell what this is inside of this little assay card. Um, you might wanna be like, well, check the weight, spectacular, check the weight. This is a five gram gold bar. Now the problem is you got this assay card, which is actually a decent amount of weight altogether. So you can't really identify that. And what I'm gonna do is put it on the scale right here and I'm gonna show you why. Five gram bar and it comes in at 12.37 grams. So how would you be able to quickly identify that if this is the only one you have? If you had more than one five gram bars next to it, you could put it up next to each other. It's probably a whole different size and thickness for sure. The weight is probably different. But if you just had the one at a shop, online, whatever the case may be, how are you going to tell the, the weight? And again, just for fun, here's a one gram bar. You know, again, one gram, and this is what it weighs in at. Hold on, let me uh, put it on there even. Uh, 4.65. So you can see that the assay card actually takes up a lot of the weight. So you can't, you can't use the scale to identify it. Now what we'll do is we'll take this out of here and then we're going to start doing some more tests including the scale test um, i do have a magnet here and the magnet does not stick to it the problem is if i was to use a magnet scale technique that's where i take a a magnet or a slide and i slide the metal down the slide or i take the magnet and try to slide it down the metal if this is a copper core on this right here, it reacts pretty similarly to gold and silver when it comes to magnets. So that's why we're not getting any kind of stickage 
because that's probably what the core is made out of. Now, sometimes the font kind of gets messed up and the design gets a little messed up on the assay card. Um, and this right here, it looks really good. I mean, the fonts for the most part are all correct. There's, there's no misspellings or anything like that. They would just kind of draw your attention. There's no blurriness to it. I mean, it looks, it looks unfortunately very, very good. And again, your eyesight's not that good. You can't just get in there and just go, oh, you need something better to really help you identify this thing. Also, for people who like to buy these kinds of bars, one of my local bullion shop dealers will not even buy these bars from people just because he says there's so many fakes out there and he tries to move products as quick as possible. So now if he's buying these right here and has to constantly get an on and off machine, turn machines on and off, you're talking about a large waste of time. So for him to say that he won't even buy these right here is a red flag for me to even go after these. I'd rather stick with something else. Uh, but he says there's so many fakes out there that he's seeing of these. But anyways, let's go ahead and start ripping this thing up and get to the bottom of what's going on with this bar. From the Perth Mint's website, there is supposed to be some lettering around here and some that can actually only be identified with a UV light. But, I mean, do you have a UV light when you go to a shop? Does the shop have one? I mean... This is all stuff that, again, as far as just seeing it in person or on the internet, you're not going to have access to that stuff. So we have to find other ways to identify that this is legit. Um, you know, five grams doesn't feel like a whole lot in my hand. It doesn't feel very heavy at all, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and weigh it first thing. Here's, here's you know, the bar. Man, this is, this is terrible. This is a, a hate fakes, first of all. And then good fakes really upset me. So it should be five grams. And this is four nines pure gold, allegedly. So they're not going to give you free gold. It's not going to be over five grams. It's going to be five grams really close to being on the dot right here. So let's go ahead and see what the weight actually is. Uh, 4.87. Would you want to buy under five grams? No. So boom, huge red flag. You're not getting what you're supposed to uh, with this bar right here, right off the bat, it's under five grams. So if you had the bar outside of the assay card, that would be a big red flag right there for you to have under. You would never pay, you know, for gold, the price you're paying for that stuff to have under what you actually needed to purchase. So that's a, a big red flag right there. One thing about gold is actually very, very dense. It's an extremely dense metal. And there's actually somewhat of a thicker area on this right here for a five gram bar. And again, you have to have a five gram bar to put up against this to really identify that, but it is quite thick and uh, a five gram bar would not be quite that thick. So that's definitely a red flag if you had another one to you know put it next to that was out of the assay card. But again, most likely you're, you know, want to collect it. You want to keep it in that assay card. Why would you ever take it out? Um, it's, it's, it's really, really, really good. You know, uh, Perth Mint says, hey, just buy from reputable sources. And, you know, we preach that all the time. Buy from reputable sources. Now, this is Perth Mint's website, and they actually tell you who their sources are that actually can purchase from them. Uh, so, you know, go to United States of America, that's where I am. And some of the, you know, purchasers right here, the wholesale distributors are right here for you. Um, I see Amart Precious Metals. I know them. They own like JM Bullion and Provident Metals. Uh, so, that would be some place you could go. And they have a full list of U.S. retail distributors down here, too. So you can make sure that you're buying from legit sources uh, by doing that only. So that's that's one step for sure. But if not, we're, you know, use the steps I told you. Make sure your shop is testing everything using XRF or Sigma Metalytics machine to identify whether or not that's pure gold or not. And uh, you can actually go onto their uh, website to the Perth Mint and look over some of how they can help you identify the fake or real bars. Unfortunately, this information right here is not staying up to date with the counterfeiters, where the counterfeiters are staying very up to date and they're going and, oh, the Perth Mint says that we're not doing this correctly. Well, let's go ahead and fix that for the next batch of fakes we're putting out. So some of these right here are not even up to date anymore. The, um, the counterfeiters are going above and beyond what this is saying. So just Make sure you have that Sigma Metalytics. Make sure you have that XRF tested to make sure it's legit. All right, so now what I want to actually do is take this bar and uh, just cut it in half, and we're going to see what the inside of it looks like because it is not pure gold. I'm pretty confident, so I don't mind cutting it in half right now. Interestingly enough, too, some shops out there only buy gold coins and gold bars if you agree to let them cut it in half first. Believe it or not, they're, they're wanting to do that first thing, so... You're pretty much obligated to sell once your coin or your bar is cut in half, aren't you?
All right, so while I'm not able to identify what the metal on the inside is, I wanna show you what's going on here. And it's gonna be probably difficult to tell, but you might be able to tell just on the outside. So the coating on this thing, you can, you can almost see it right here by my finger that I'm moving, that there's a layer around the entire outside and the inside is definitely a different metal. So it might genuinely be gold plated just on the outside. In fact, it 99% sure it is, but that is such a thin layer that there's no value there. Um, the value comes from the whole entire bar and it's definitely different. I know the coloration is hard to tell here, but in person it looks, it definitely looks much lighter color than gold. Almost, I don't wanna say white, but it definitely looks like a, a whitish uh, hue uh, compared to the gold that it should be. It's very, very unusual looking and uh, not gold, ladies and gentlemen. That is not gold in there, unfortunately. Probably, it's probably a copper. It's just, you know, it's a shame. Um, do your best to buy from reputable people, like I always say, and you won't go wrong. Um, if you're buying from just any old place, find out how they're testing. Uh, if you go to a shop and you say like, hey, I'd like to buy that bar, but how do you test? If they say like, oh, I just, <laughs> I just know that's legit. Uh, that's not good enough. It really is not. Um, ask them, especially the expensive pieces like this, like gold gets very expensive. Ask them to show you how they test and uh, to test this, please. You know, be polite, of course. Uh, you want to do business with that place, but, you know, ask them to, to see how they're testing their stuff because it's not just okay just to say, hey, I can tell, you know, it's, it's good enough for me. I bought it, so you should be able to buy it too. Um, I want to I wanna know how they're testing and, and uh, be confident. Gold is gold. It's very expensive, and we want to make sure we're getting our legit pieces. So this is not legit, unfortunately. It's an extremely good counterfeit. Um, it's terrible that people want to hurt people. The goal for these counterfeiters is to sell illegitimate products and make a bonus, basically. They want to sell metals that are cheap, and they want to sell you it at a gold price. So, you know, shame on those counterfeiters out there. Um, I wish I could stand them up all in a line and just, you know, kindly point my finger at them and say, how dare you? You know, that's all I would do, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I'll say for now. That's another counterfeit that's uh, down the drain. So thank you to Shore Stacker. I greatly appreciate it. Um, at the very least, this counterfeit has become education for people to help them just be a little bit more careful out there and to to be more cautious about what they're buying. I gotta go for now. I appreciate you all watching, of course. If this helps you out, you know what to do, man. Thumbs up, comment, uh, subscribe, and definitely share the video. Let people know to be careful with these right here. If you have bars like this, uh, make sure you check your bar. Don't be afraid that if you've had a bar in your collection for many years and you just, you've just you never had it tested, to go somewhere that you can trust to test it. Um, you know, find uh, reputable sources out there for testing things. And sometimes those places will charge you, sometimes they won't, but um, it would be worth your uh, peace of mind, I think, to have that stuff checked out and tested. Anyways, I got to go for now. Appreciate you watching. Spectacular is out. Yeah.